The next topic will be, does Internet of Things make products smart but hackable? How to bring your smart devices to market faster without compromising your brand security? Now, please welcome the Russian-Irish Anatoly Lebedev, CEO of and founder of Sesanta Software. Hello, everyone. Um, oh, it's loud. Um, as Georg mentioned, my name is Anatoly, and um, I think a lot of, bunch of people left and they actually missed the most important part of today's. And I'm telling you, just stay with me. So before I go into presentation, which is titled, and there you can see the topic, I'd like to have a bit, a bit of a a game or whatsoever. You probably notice I look a bit different. I look like a football fan, which is not exactly the truth. Today is a special day, actually. Today is the 17th of March. Does anyone know what 17th of March means to Irish people? Who knows that? 17th of March. 17th of March. What does any it mean clue, for Irish any people? Any idea? Yeah. Who Saint said Patrick's. That? Saint, Saint Patrick's. Patrick's. <laughs> That's it. It's Saint Patrick's Day today. It's probably the most beautifully celebrated um, kind of day in the world, apart from the Christmas side. It's actually one of the widest celebrated as well. As of now, you can have maybe tens, if not hundreds of parades happening around the world. So I come from Dublin, and as I'm speaking here, I actually missed probably the biggest and the most beautiful parade, which is happening now in Dublin. And countrymen of me are now is like me, dressed in green and have a, a pint of a black stuff in their, in their hands. And um, I kind of don't want to, to be a difference. So I, I got some Guinness with me from Ireland. It's actually real Guinness, guys. I, I, I heard Germans love Guinness, and your Guinness is a bit different. So I don't, but I, I don't want to celebrate myself alone. What I'd like to do is actually this Guinness, this pack of Guinness, will go to the best question, to the person who will ask the best question at, at the end of this presentation. So I'm going to put it aside so you can see it's actually a real no, one. No, put it on here. top. We want to see it all the time. No, I'm going to see it here. <laughs> I, I'm going to keep it close to my heart. So. Keep, stay tuned and get your questions ready. I'm going to get this scarf away because it's actually pretty warm. And I think this fellow here likes it better than me. Um, so with all that, without further ado, let me get straight into the action uh, on the topic and IoT and security. So a lot of people here and a lot of companies start thinking about getting their devices connected and um, basically getting all the benefits of that, but at the same st stage, they're, they're, they're thinking about security and how to do it properly. So as, as the course of today's presentation, what we're going to talk about is to, to have a bit of overview of um, IoT growth and revenue opportunities. So maybe some of that would be um, quite known to you, but nevertheless, we'll have a, a, a brief look into the history. And then we talk about the IoT security risk and how do you get it right. So let's walk the memory lane and see what IoT is all about. So IoT, or Internet of Things, has been a um, hot child on the block for about three, four last years. Top of the news, everybody's crying, IoT is there. IoT, IoT, not many people understand that it's not something new. It's actually effectively just another name for machine to machine. And machine to machine has been there for at least a couple of decades since uh, 1970. And a couple of things actually changed in the last decade or so, which actually enabled the whole IoT paradigm. And I'm going to talk about a few of them. So first of all, as a Moore law, it basically become possible to have a piece of hardware um, as small as like thumbnail. I actually have a piece of hardware on me. You can see this is pretty small. So which used to be like size of that uh, cube or even bigger is now uh, fits into a small kind of chip in here. But most importantly, it's just priced of about a couple of US dollars. So imagine about that. And it has Wi-Fi inbuilt in. So you can actually literally integrate it into anything, into even pack of the Guinness if you want, and track it and, and receive all the data. So this is the Moore law, which, which brought the, the, connecti uh, the, uh, the price of hardware and the capability of hardware down significantly. And the second, uh, which is actually quite important as well, the infrastructure and connectivity become quite ubiquitous. You now have broadbands in all of your houses. People think of Wi-Fi as something as normal as electricity or water in the, in the places they live or they walk in. Uh, most of the cafes, if they don't have Wi-Fi, it's actually a pretty big uh, problem for them. And 3G and 4G cover in half of the globe, literally. Like everywhere you go, you have the 3 and 4G connection. And what's more important, people don't really think about what's the price of it. If I ask any of you how much you pay per megabyte of data you consume on your broadband or your 3G, you would probably never know, because it's actually so cheap that you don't bother. So all that enabled what we know now is an Internet of Things, 
because the price of connectivity and the price of hardware became as low that it created a lot of opportunities for something which wasn't connected before to be connected now. Um, and then if you look at the, at the hype and analytics looking into that, uh, someone like Gardner predicts 20.8 billion of devices to be connected in the next four to five years. Just think about it. It's more than threefold increase from what we have right now, and then it will all come online. And if you uh, look at the market size opportunity, it actually, analytics say, and it would be 1.9 trillion of US dollar opportunity. So we're actually at the, at the beginning of the pretty big wave, and it's down to us if we're going to get this opportunity or not. Um, but just to give you a bit of a comparison, let's actually look briefly on the trends, what happened to the personal computing, uh, mobile, so smartphones, and what happened into IoT. If you look at the very uh, first graph, the personal computing, the gray line down there, the longest one, it actually took over 10 years, over 10 years for a personal computer to reach a mark of 1 billion uh, devices to be installed. Uh, so mobile phones and smartphones, let's say that it took them less than five years to reach that landmark. And look at IoT. It's actually exponential growth. It's already over a billion, and it's just, consider it to be in just at the very beginning. It's going to be tens of billions, if not hundreds of billions of devices connected. Pretty much everything. If you, if you look at this room, let's say if we meet five years from now and SEBIT at this very stage, though I hope we're going to be on the central stage, um, so at this very stage, on our bodies, in our, in our homes, um, in, in, on SEBIT, pretty much everything going to be connected. And most importantly, we wouldn't even know now what kind of devices we're going to have, because those devices, they hasn't been invented yet. So it's businesses like yours, manufacturers, vendors, enterprises, they'll, they'll, they'll bring this next breed of connected things, and um, we're going to have a lot of fun with them. So. Another important statistics provided to us by Cisco researchers is actually they looked at the verticals and the value split between them. Um, and what's interesting here is that about a third, 27% of the whole value will come from the manufacturing piece. So how many people here in the audience represent manufacturer or some sort of business which produce piece of device or electronics? Just raise of hands. So about 10. Okay, it's great. So you guys on the good position because you're going to grab a third of that market. Actually, you have an opportunity to grab a third of that market if, if you're willing to. Um, and why is that? You, you would ask me, why is that important for the businesses to even consider? Why, why, would, why would you connect something online, thing or device or, or, or other equipment? So first of all, you, you think about higher efficiencies and an opportunity to have a post post sale connection with your products, right? You can have an analytics comment from that product telling you about what's happening. You can allow preventative maintenance. So basically, you can actually ring to your customer and say that the device they bought from you three years ago actually need a bit of a service, and you can provide them that service, which is not possible now. Um, you basically answer in consumer de demand, because people actually more and more uh, go into the mode that they control things, and they, they would like to control the things they own. And without them having this opportunity coming from you, it's actually pretty difficult. And last but not least, probably the most important is an additional revenue stream. Any business trying to maximize the revenue streams, uh, any business trying to improve the product they have right now by, by actually getting more value out of that. So with that hardware I showed you, and with the many more coming into market pretty soon, for the fraction of cost, you can have a significant revenue stream into your business. And that's actually one of the key drivers. I don't need actually to sell you the IoT opportunity. I think most of us in this room and in, on this planet already understand that there is an opportunity for their business. It's just a matter of how to be connected. Let's actually have a quick look on, on one of the, uh, um, of some of the most innovative businesses here, which are already at the forefront of, of, the, uh, of the story and which have the, um, the things connected. And I've been uh, yesterday to Pavilion 11, or I think it's 13, there are Tesla in there, probably the most kind of crowded uh, booth with Tesla car in there. People actually crawl over, all over that. I was fortunate enough to explore Tesla in, in California a couple of months ago to have a bit better kind of understanding. And I'm, I'm just amazed the way they actually took it into Internet of Things kind of space. So I talked to the guy who bought Tesla like three years ago, right? The very first one, more or less, He's a proud owner. He's still driving that. And then a couple months ago, Tesla introduced self-driving mode. 
So the guy went to bed one night to only wake up in the morning and found his Tesla, it's already a self-driving car. How cool is that? While he was asleep, Tesla pushed remote update to his car parked in the garage, and the next morning the car can park into the garage itself. So this is the kind of the breakthrough we're talking about. This is what IoT enables. It actually enables manufacturers to make the products much better and provide better value to the customers. Look at the Walt Disney. They actually started introducing, I think it's now and only in states, the smart wristbands. So you as a, as a customer of them, you're planning a, a trip with your family in there, and you all know that when you go to Walt Disney, it's all about queuing, more queuing, and once again queuing. So this kind of experience needs to be broken, and that's what they're doing with that. So before you go, you say, I want to visit X, Y, that. I want to go into that restaurant. I want this food. They'll ship you this uh, wristband. You put it on. You arrive. You go without the queue to where you want to go. You enjoy the experience. You walk in into the restaurant, and the waiter already know. There's a family of four. They have the table over there, and they're going to have pizza, coke, and whatever else. So for you, as a customer, it's a pretty seamless experience. You actually enjoy being in, in, in Walt Disney rather than queue all the time. And then look at a hive by British Gas. So it's, uh, I think, mostly now in uh, UK and in Ireland. But what it gives me, I'm actually one of the consumers of, of those, so a bit of a biased, biased approach. Uh, it gives me an opportunity to save on energy and, and basically and my money by actually hitting the apartment when I need it to be hit it, rather than using some cycle. So let, let's say now I'm in Hanover and I actually turn it off remotely. And when I'm going to be on my flight back just before boarding the plane, I can turn it on when, and arrive to the, to, to the warm house. So how cool is that? And if you think about how spread it globally, probably like 1% of the households have it. But in 5, 10 years, that's going to be 100% of households. Uh, OnFarm is doing the same magic of Internet of Things for farms. They basically enable farmers to have a better understanding of what's happening with their crops, the temperature, the soil, everything they need to know, provide them the analytics and statistics so the farmers can actually concentrate on what they do best making sure the thing is growing and they, they, they supply it to the consumers rather than worrying about the conditions and everything else. And Schneider Electric, um, basically a company which is pretty well known in Germany, they, they're actually one of the innovators in connecting electrical devices and electrical equipment online. So look at them, they are disruptors in the existing markets and they are already doing what we are talking about and more and more companies will follow and those of you guys who are, has not followed yet, they, you, will be, you will be following them pretty soon. Um, and that's where actually the, uh, the old worry starts, um, is the IoT security, is the risk. Because everyone who is thinking about connection, the very first question they ask, yeah, but somebody will hack into that, and something happened, how secure is that? And everybody's crashing their head and thinking, yeah, it's cool, I'd like to have more revenue streams, but how do I, how do I get it connected in a secure way? And in fairness, this is a fairly well-known um, problem, and there is obviously some reasons to be, to be worrying about. Um, first of all, somebody can get access to your consumer data, obviously to company-sensitive data. Uh, there could be identity theft, um, access to devices, and, and many, many, many things can happen and can go wrong. So you don't want somebody named a hacker, this uh, a person who never know how he looks like, named hacker to have an access to your devices. Um, and actually, it's happening right now. Even the big companies which are connecting their things now, they are they actually not doing it in the right manner. That's, that's the case study, basically, of Fisher-Price, probably one of the biggest um, toys manufacturer in the world. They introduced to the market a toy, a smart toy, connected bear. So it's basically a bear which interacts with the child, learns the name and a couple other things, and kind of having, having more kind of interactive experience with the child. So a security firm called Rapid7 ran the, um, the security test on this bear and figured out that it's actually pretty, pretty easy hackable. So, and it's actually hackable from the application Fisher Price supplied for the parents for this bear, so they can actually put some, some stuff as well. So they reported about that uh, Fisher Price ran on and fixed the issue, so nobody was hurt. But this is a great example where a big company like Fisher Price with the last resources and time to do something right, made a pretty, pretty basic mistake and, and released product to the market which can compromise the consumers of the product. And in this case, probably those consumers, they are the most precious one. Those everyone care about, they are kids. So you do care about your child and what happened to your child. Um, the question then for all of us is, will your brand survive? Like if I get that thing connected, so Fisher Price addressed the issue, probably they had a bit of a problem, but then 
uh, it sorted out, but we don't want to step into there, right? We don't want to have such an exporter, such a bad press about our brands. That's why um, we need to get security right. And how to get it right, we are going to talk a bit more about this now. Um, and I'm going to share a couple of things with you. By no means as an exhaustive list, but it gives you a bit better overview of what you need to do in order to get security right. So security as always consists of multiple parts. In the IoT it consists of hardware piece, the actual device that, uh, that physical chip I was talking to you about. So this, this thing which will go into your, let's say, device or equipment and the software piece. So on the hardware piece what you need to, to make sure is that you're using a pretty good uh, whole crypto stack on a chip and ran ran random number generation feature enabled. But not all of that, you actually have to also go for anti-tampering features. So if somebody has a physical access to your device, even if they tamper into that, they will not be able to get uh, required information in order to hack the rest. Uh, on the software piece, what you need to do, you need to always look for implementing the most secure communication with the recent standards. So you go for TLS, DTLS, um, and even though you go for hardware and, 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 and software, you should always have a, a recovery plan. This is super important. Even if you're, somebody tells you like, to get your security 100% right, you should never believe because nobody could get security 100% right. And if there's a person in this room who can claim that, I'm not sure that person knows what he's talking about. Um, so always have a recovery plan. Assume that things will go wrong, and they definitely go wrong because people improve, hackers are getting smarter and smarter, somebody will be trying to hack into your thing all the time. But if you have a recovery plan, you should be able to basically push and fix it pretty fast. And this is what's most important for you. And last but not least, which is a pretty well uh, known, but not by many people, uh, honored enough uh, um, functionality is remote update. The, the, update, the, the update I was talking for Tesla, like over the air update. So you, you should be able to push something to your devices over the air um, when the people, the consumers of your product should not even understand that it's happening in order to fix some bugs, some issues with the product and uh, basically to, to make sure the security is taken right. Um, speaking of security actually, I think when, when a business and enterprise thinking of connecting their product online, they always think that they have the best uh, kind of expertise in-house and they go and run and do it in-house. And that's actually where we figure out what most of pitfalls align. Um, when people are doing it in-house, they assume that um, they know everything, but in fact security protocols and um, and other security related stuff is, is pretty complex and it does require significant experience and expertise in the area. And in, therefore, if your company does not have that experience, even if you hire right people, but they weren't, weren't doing that for all their lives, they will make critical mistakes. Assume that it, it's going to happen. And the other one, which is actually very interesting because we talk about Internet of Things and companies running into that field, is that everyone is trying to be as fast as possible there. And sometimes for the sake of speed, the actually the security things are taken quite easily. So if you want to launch something fast, you, you, you tend to behave like, oh, like, like they say in Ireland, it's going to be grand. And, and you just launch it to the market and then like Fisher Price, you find it's not, it's not grand. It's actually quite uh, bad in terms of security and needs to be fixed. That's why um, I'll give you a couple of examples of companies uh, we worked with on Cezanne's part who are taking it seriously and making the security piece right. Um, one of them is an American company. They are doing uh, a home automation product, connected video, peep hole. And what they're doing, they basically have uh, a piece of hardware that peep hole attached to the door. When somebody knocks your door, it starts streaming video to your mobile phone. And you can see who is at your door. Doesn't matter where you are. You can be now in Sebit and somebody knocking your door in Australia. You can see that. Um, so what they wanted, they actually wanted to have a full security stack, right? Because you don't want someone else looking at who is by your door. You, you, wanna, you, want, you, you don't want to enable that for, for other people. Um, they, need to, they needed to have like a secure firmware, they need to have a cloud to put all the pieces together. And obviously, like most of the enterprises, they try to do it in-house. Um, but then they quickly realized that they actually have to trust the professionals. So they came to us and they chose the IoT platform we provide. And this is the platform which, which has built-in security standards. Uh, it has over-the-air update and every, 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 everything that we were talking about in a couple of previous slides, this platform has. So what happened to people is that they actually had a pretty short prototyping uh, cycle and they're already up and running on the market selling their devices. 
Um, another company is actually a German company based, based here in Germany. Uh, they call Quantex and they're doing a car diagnosis tool. So it's actually an existing product. That's, that's an interesting piece. So this is the product they've been selling for a while, but just they figured out that if the product is connected, if you can uh, transfer data remotely, that actually create more value for their customers. So they, they actually had um, a requirement of having a secure remote access functionality and uh, in order to enhance this existing product and sell it to the broader uh, audience. And they actually also choose the um, IoT platform with built-in security and all this stuff. And in, in the outcome, they, they had this product which was actually improved and it's faster to market and they have an innovator, innovator status in the, in the market. Um, so it's actually very important for you to think when you compare uh, if you're gonna do it in-house or if you're gonna uh, hire a third-party provider into that, look at the benefits which, you, which will come with the third-party provider and, and consider that what, what makes more sense for you. So I'm going to outline a couple of those. First of all, always look for the experience. Uh, make sure that the, the, the company you're working with or the people you're working with, they really know what they're talking about um, and they do provide an ongoing support for whatever they develop for you. Um, look at the features of the platform they provide. Uh, basically, make sure that it has all the features we were talking about. It's secure, it's using the most recent standard. It has over-the-air update. Uh, look at the maintenance they provide and make sure that they actually do develop the platform ongoing all the time, improving then, and so you can benefit out of that. Last but not least, I think, from the experience we have so far, uh, hiring a, a trusted third-party provider to do that for you is actually turning out to be a much more cost efficient than to run it internally, significantly cost efficient. Uh, if you want to try it yourself, you're more than welcome and then you can share your feedback. But a vendor who knows what he does always going to have a lesser price point than if you do it in-house. And then the time to market, which is most important, is pretty short. Um, so without further ado, let me actually look at, at the whole development cycle. There's actually uh, a diagram, actually a couple bullet points showing what's happening on the hardware and software piece. So as a company, Cezante can help you on two fronts, hardware and software. We can actually help you to prototype your, your hardware to do the electronic br blueprints, to do the PCB design, and then once we go into the software piece, we can do the firmware piece which runs on the, on the hardware and the, the, firm, the, the cloud piece which runs on the, on the cloud, um, and the rest can actually be taken care of by you. So. This is a qu quick overview of the platform itself, and I guess this is not a big surprise to most of you. So it should have a firmware, the, the piece which is actually sitting on, on the device part, right? Which enables the device logic, what needs to be transferred, how it needs to be controlled. It should have a cloud, which basically considers and getting all the data in. And we do have also a remote update, over-the-air update. Uh, we do have an APIs to connect to the existing ERP or cloud systems or solutions you are using. And all in all, this is a full stack IoT system which can actually be tailored to your business need in a fairly quick time and enable you to get to the market faster for the fraction of cost. And you may ask actually why I'm talking to here, and this stage pr was pretty busy and going to be busy for the rest of today. Why actually would you go with someone like SmartJS or something like SmartJS? And why, how is it different from everything else on the market? And I'll tell you how. So first of all, which is uh, one of the most important thing, this, is, it, this system has state-of-the-art security, scalability, and, and reliability. In fact, our core engineering team, they are former Google engineers, so they actually know what they're talking about. For decades, they were building the most secure and robust uh, background and actually back system on what, what Google using for uh, the product called AdWords and, and uh, basically Google search. We are hardware agnostic. We give you a choice to pick the piece of hardware you want we don't want to dictate that. We don't want to do the, the vendor lock like many others doing. Um, we do provide remote management so, and remote update uh, functionality. We have seamless interoperation with our clouds. Let's say if you're using Amazon IoT or um, Microsoft Azure, we can integrate with them. Uh, we do have our very own JavaScript engine, which ca can actually enable you or engineers on your side to finish the device logic in JavaScript, which no one else can provide now. If you fix the C++, we can also do it in C++. That's not a problem. And it's an open source. There's not that many people out there who are providing open source solutions. You can actually, as we talk now, go to Cezanto.com, download the piece of firmware, get the chip out of my pocket, connect it to your computer, flash it, and have a prototype by the end of today. If you point me someone else who can do it in this room, I would be happy to talk to that person. Um, 
So with all that, let me tell you a bit more about Cezanta. As I mentioned, we're an Irish base. You can see that uh, scarf in the Guinness. That's something we enjoy quite often in, in, in Dublin, a great Guinness. Uh, we founded the company in, in 13. As I mentioned, top engineering team coming out of Google. We have another product called Mongoose Web Server. Some of you might know that it's been on the market for quite a long time and having over a million and a half downloads. We develop in SmartGS, a full stack IoT platform, and we are proud to serve, even being a relatively young company, we are proud to serve customers like NASA, Dell, HP, Samsung, Intel, and many others. So this is Cezanta, all for you. Uh, thank you very much for your time, and I'm really looking forward to the uh, questions of you. Thank you. Thank you, Anatoly. Your questions, things you'd like to know. Think of your business. What would matter to you? Don't be shy. There, there should be a question. I, I'd love to yeah. get some questions. It's such a pity to depart with that. What is the next step in that development? You know, if you, if you think of the next 10 years, we look back to today. Do you have an idea? Do you oh, dare it's going guess? to be. It's going to be. You know, there is DeLorean in, I think, in Hall 11. There's actually, I don't know if it's actual one, but there's a copy of DeLorean with this stuff like from Back to the Future. Mm -hmm. And it was hilarious to see it. I think if we are, take that car 10 years ahead of us, it's going to be a completely different world. We might not even have that thing called mobile phone in our pockets anymore. By, by the meaning of that, our kids would be laughing. Why would you actually use something like a brick and, and, and carry that over with you? You wouldn't probably need it. And pretty much everything into our lives is going to be connected. It's going to be secure and more safe environment we are, than, than, than the one we are living now. Think of your business. What would you like to know? Usually you call him and you pay him, and it's very expensive. You, but you already bought your ticket, so now he is here for free. You may ask anything that's just relevant for you in, in your own business. What are the classical clients you approach? So what we are targeting, actually, that's why I asked the, to, show, to show the hands for uh, businesses and those, actually, manufacturers producing different type of equipment. They would be probably the, the best companies we can work with. So if you have a piece of electronics equipment or device, you want to actually get it connected, we can enable you to do it in, in a pretty fast manner for the fraction of cost and um, with the best standards, it's going to be secure, it's going to be stable, and you would be able to scale it to million of devices distributed all over the world in a very short period of time. That's, that's, that's our promise. That sounds pretty exciting. So guys, don't, don't make me drink it all on my own. I need to give it to someone, <laughs> at least one question, right? One question. Actually, those guys from Sebit, they like Guinness as well. They told me that if nobody is asking the question, they'll just take it. Okay. Okay. You'll be sticking around for a long time. Yeah, I'm actually the out there. If, you want to, uh, if, if you're too You'll shy to ask it in public, if you want to talk to me, <laughs> I'm over there. And I'm yes. going to give that Guinness to someone else. That's, that's <laughs> a great idea. That's been a great talk, very inspiring. Thank you. And um, wish you all the best and stick around so we can talk to you. Thank, Thank you, you, Anatoly. Have a great day. And happy St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. <laughs>